there's a whole lot of testosterone in the fan cave today, fangirls and fanboys. Corgan Bond here. Kristen's out of town this week, so today I'm joined by Mr. Wesley Jack and John Vanderhoff to shoot the breeze about this week in pop culture. We'll talk about Sin City 2, about Suge Knight's pre-VMA misfortune, about the upcoming Emmys, and more. I think it's about that time. So, uh, hey, hey guys. Hello, Corey. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for being here. I realize I normally turn the sound off on my um, computer so that nobody like Skypes me in the middle of it or anything, but I forgot and now I'm sandwiched. So it's well, making Twitter noises over there. I apologize. Totally fine. We'll have random warnings every once in a while that uh, life continues outside the podcast. Life continues. Life uh, finds a way. You guys. Well, apropos. Yes. You guys. Can you believe it? Today. Lord Richard Attenborough shuffled off this morning. Was he a lord? He was a, he was a, he was a lord. lord. Yeah. yeah. I wrote Sir on Facebook yeah, and then I, you know, went and looked it up and I was like, I'm wrong. Wow. Can you be a Sir and a Lord? It's Lord above Sir? I think lord it is. Lord must be above Sir. It's gotta oh, be. Interesting. Who else is a Lord that's like alive? Lord Voldemort. Lord, I don't know. <laughs> lord Vader? The only one I can do. Did you guys, did you guys watch uh, West Wing? No. Okay. Well, there's this guy if named only Lord, Kristen were here, Lord she... John Marbury who shows up. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, he plays a hilarious so, character. But um... wait, so the character is not Lord John Marbury? That's actually the, who this person is. No, no, that's the character. Oh, character. oh. that's the only Lord I know. So of. in other words, you do not know of any <laughs> Lord. <laughs> so it was a fictional Lord. Fictional Lord. <laughs> but it was like a Lord in the British system, at least. It was, you know. Okay. Referring to the British system. I don't think the the question was do they exist. Well, no. <laughs> the That's thing was the only one other I actors or no, yeah. yeah. I don't. I honestly. I mean, how is Patrick Stewart not a lord? As well? right? I just think it would take a long Ian time. McKellen? Right? Ian McKellen. Ian McKellen. I feel like Sean Connery like, needs to be close to being lorded. Sean Connery. I don't know about that. Judy Dench. Judy Lord. Mm, I wonder if can you Lady do that? Dench. Like, oh yeah, Lord and Lady. Huh? Yeah, That's right? the. Yeah. That's the other one so. of those. Well, she I wonder, actually, like honestly, if, if Richard started some level of royalty, or uh, at least peerage, before he became an actor. Did, did you say peerage? Is it peerage? I what don't know. Is, is, the... that, is that the word? Is, does that mean, like, you have <laughs> royal lineage? Yeah, like lineage in which that you have... Okay. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't have, like, a, a whole lot of knowledge about how this works. I like, um... Cut. I like, um... Kate Middleton, and I like Prince William. Right. That's about all I know. That's about it. Yeah. I watched their wedding. Stayed up all night. I learned recently that the I mean, like there are certain royal families around the world, right? So Norway still has like a king and queen. Yeah, yeah. Sweden, Thailand, a bunch of places like this. What I didn't know, Germany still has royal families. Isn't huh. that kind of weird? And the, what the do they do? Wealthy German like royal family, like it's not quite royal, but it's still you know lords, ladies, that sort of thing. Um, is the something Untaxis family, which is also in. Um, Grand Budapest Hotel, the, the bad guys are or something in Texas. But what actually, what they did in Germany, these this royal family, they founded the postal system in Europe. This like in all of Europe? Total nerddom, I apologize. <laughs> That's, um, but yes, this is what they did, is they, they started like the postal system that became big throughout Europe, and that sort of got them a whole bunch of lands and title and money and all that sort of stuff, and their family still exists this day. And of course, the youngest, you know, heir of whatever this family is, races uh, cars is like a, you know, does like F1 racing. You're like, what what are you going to do when you have that much money? It's like, like Hugh Grant and about a boy. Yeah, like, something you like, just like You just do you what you want. find random dangerous hobbies and uh, and keep up for your life. Anyway. That's... Isn't like Bear Grylls some sort of royalty okay. too? I don't know. I think he isn't. I don't even know. I feel like Bear is right below Bear Lord, Grylls? isn't it? It's like you, or... I don't know how you manage to like... It's like, I think you have your finger on the pulse, and then you're like, it's who's like, Bear Grylls? Yeah. And I'm like, where were you for the past 12 years? You Give know? me a context clue. Man vs. Wild oh, with Bear Grylls. That guy. Yeah, I never watched that show. <laughs> oh, that's a classic. Oh, man, he he now... You never saw Man vs. Wild? I know what he looks like, but I... But, but you know his it. name, at least. I yeah, know his name. Yeah, he did know who Bear Grylls is. is. Um, and I want to say that he's, like, descended from... Like royalty, or maybe just really rich people. I don't know. Some of that. I mean, if you're like the kind of he was the youngest person ever to like scale Mount Everest, I believe. Oh, he was like 23. Really? Yeah. I don't know if it's been broken since then, but at the time, it was a record breaker. Um, when you name your kid Bear, they're either gonna be. It's not his real name. Oh. oh. Yeah. Grills is real though. Okay. <laughs> He's What's legitimately his real name? Grills. Real name I don't know. Maybe we should. Like we should look. Terrence Grills. Terrence Grills. 
this is tongue and squirrels. I don't let's I feel like every time I come on this show, I like I'm always like, Who's this? Who's he that? He asked what Coachella was last time. He was <laughs> Edward. Here. Edward. Ed Grills. <laughs> Edward Michael. This Edward. is my friend Eddie Grills. Can't imagine why he would change. It. And now now let's see about Oh his... no, see here's the sad thing that I also didn't I had no idea he was British. What? I've only seen pictures of him. <laughs> Yeah. Only seen pictures We've of We've established that neither of us have really watched the program. Heard his name. That's incredible. He even has a show now. Eaton House. That's awesome. Um, well, cool. I actually did not know that he was from County Down in Northern Ireland, which is where I have spent much time. Hmm. So there's that. Oh, he's it's not royalty. He's the son of Sir Michael Grills and Lady Sarah Grills. There you right. go. So they're like MPs. They're politicians. That means he could technically be a lord someday? Uh, no. Sure. Yeah, I feel like we're he's already his way up. But you guys doing so well at talking about shit we don't know about. <laughs> well, welcome, welcome to the fan cave. Here's another thing, uh, interesting fact. Uh, he has three sons with his wife. Their names: Jesse. That's a, that's a good Jesse. name. Yeah. Marmaduke. Marmaduke. <laughs> and the Huckleberry. Name. Huck. Everybody loves a good Huckleberry. Yeah. Marmaduke. Marmaduke's is not uh, choice, I guess. Thing. I mean, I guess you call them Duke and Huck. Duke. Yeah. yeah, that works. Oh. I wonder just... if Jesse feels left out. I know. Well, that's the thing. Like, you're like, well, on the one hand, I'm the only one who doesn't have a terrible name. <laughs> on the other hand, uh, I can't share do they that not with like them. me enough? Right. Or, like, um, yeah, you feel like the odd man out. I'm guessing Jesse's probably the oldest, and so they hadn't figured out they wanted to give their kids stupid names yet. The other two probably came after the bear. He's like, I'm bear, yeah, so. Yeah, bear. I think he changed his name, like, fairly young, though, and that it's, it's like, it's actually his legal name, but um, it's just, he was, what did we determine it was? Edward? No. Edward, yeah. Edward. Everybody in England's name is Edward. Um, he has a show right now, yeah. and it, I can't think of what it's called off the top of my head, but the first episode, basically what he does, is he does all these survival scenes. Do you know what Man vs. Wild is? Yeah, was? yeah, he okay. gets dropped off somewhere, and he has yeah, to survive. Yeah, he has to survive, he usually ends up drinking of... urine and sure. weird things like that, eating snakes. Um, so in this show... It, he's doing that, but with a celebrity companion. Oh. And so the first one had Zac Efron in it. He had um, uh, this journalist that I only know because she does, like, the Sister Wives recap episodes. <laughs> and I watch a lot of Sister Wives. Um, and then, he, like, he's got, like, Ben Stiller, I think. Oh. Um, yeah, so it's it's quite entertaining. Zac Efron was really fun to Is watch. Is it called, like, he's Celebrity like, versus Wild? No. I don't think so. Let's I just think of celebrity it. golf tournaments now and uh, Happy well, Gilmore. So I hope that Bob Barker will one day be on <laughs> that would be great. whatever this program is called. That would be incredible. I don't think that that would be safe, though. Uh, probably not. I don't think he should be also, doing life He's this. running wild. Running wild. And okay. I think Tamron Hall is the girl I was talking about who does the sister wives things. Channing Tatum. See, these are all like fit, you know, 30-somethings or 20-somethings. Yeah, well, yeah, he's not, like, throwing them out there with... I was about... <laughs> the first person that came to mind was Chris Farley. And I'm like, no, clearly he's not going out there with Chris Farley. Well, no, but look, Tom Arnold. Tom Arnold, yeah, there you go. That's not a fit 30-something. True story. I don't think. True. Every time I hear the title, Man vs. Wild, though, I always think of um, Phil Hartman's Troy McClure. Do you guys remember? There's okay. one where he comes out and he says, you remember, may remember me from such nature programs as Man vs. Nature, The Road to Victory. <laughs> <laughs> Which I feel like is what Bear Girls is for. This doing. is this is another thing you Man said wins. you you said you weren't doing anything interesting with your weekend. True story. Uh, That's what true. he was really doing was watching the uh, FXX. FXX Simpsons marathon mm, and sending yes. me screenshots yes. of the episodes. Every Simpsons ever. It's in the really good sort of zone right now. So there's mm -hmm. a you know there's a string of really phenomenal seasons, and I keep on catching it. I forgot how long he was doing this. That Brad Bird was the story editor for mm -hmm. so many of these excellent seasons. Um, anyway, so it's in that sort of period right now. I think, you know, in the next few days, as it gets farther and farther along, it'll be stuff that I don't know as well and won't be as enticed to watch, but, um... Well, that's, there's, like, a, yeah, the nostalgia of having, it, like, Simpsons sort of raised most of us, so I think oh, yeah. that makes, like, that sweet spot even yeah. sweeter. But I actually, personally, I kind of, I like the newer Simpsons. I've I never... I know them. And so yeah, I'm not going to be drawn just, yeah. to watch them. I mean, because there are specific episodes that I kind of, you know, look through the yeah. schedule and think, okay, I have to... Yeah, I should watch I this one. I have to watch one. this one. I have to watch that one, so... Yeah, but I've actually, you know, a lot of people, I mean, I think this is also when you're coming from something that, like... It, you're so sentimentally attached to and stuff like that. Like when it changes, 
inevitably as something does after 25 years <laughs> or whatever true. like true. people are like oh it was of course way better when i was a kid and yeah. that kind of stuff but i actually like i think i mean it has its off episodes and stuff like that but i, I haven't had like a, an entire season where i'm like Definitely. yeah no i think i would still watch it if um if i if i just you know made a little bit more time for it but it right. is like the nostalgia that's been drawing me back to it yeah but it's insane that it's going to take 12 days of 24 hours. days. Of, that's 48 episodes a day. That's And crazy. it's still taking 12 days to get through every single... It's 552 total episodes. Yeah. Do they, and do they air commercials or anything? The yeah, they do. They do okay. commercials. But um, the movies are right in the center of it. And um, yeah, it's just incredible that they have that much programming over that much time. I can't so. keep my head thing on. Uh, yeah, that's... That's now, insane. Has that's that a lot website of launched yet? That is going to be where you can stream all the episodes. I think it's at the end of the. Yeah, thing, wasn't that what it's leading? So this is leading. Up to. Okay, I see. Yeah, I think that's the idea. I'm just really jealous because I want to be watching. You don't them. have FXX. I don't have FXX. I didn't even know it was a thing, and then all of a sudden it popped up on my like list on like my guide, and I was like, oh, "Ooh, they play cool stuff on there." And then I was like, Prah, and it was like, "Ha ha, you, you have, have to subscribe to something." Yeah. yeah. Like a uh, story of my I life. I didn't know it was a thing until. Very very recently, I don't think well, I've ever watched new? anything else on it. I, I I think it's been around for a while. I think it's been around, it? yeah. It's been around for a while, but I, I literally only noticed it maybe a month ago. Yeah, uh, scrolling through it, I was like, hmm, that's um, that's a place some interesting stuff. I hate that. It's always like those channels that like I'm like everything they show, I want to watch it. I'm like oh, no, I have access. basic proletariat cable and can't watch anything. So I watch a lot of um travel channel and a lot of dateline mostly okay i like to spend a good friday night in watching dateline drink some wine you're a classy lady Uh, that brings me back to my college (laughs) day we went hard we went hard back then let me tell you um yeah so there is that this all stemmed though from losing uh lord attenborough today so that is very sad because as everyone knows Jurassic Park is my favorite movie. Um, it's it's even on like my Facebook timeline. It's like says, you know, nineteen eighty five born, nineteen ninety two Jurassic Park, and those are like my only events well, that I have on it. Important things, so, you know. Yeah. Uh, yep. And so I'm just I, it's but he was old, like super he was, old. He was ninety. Ninety, 90 old, yeah. is yeah. very old. Well done. Yeah. Lord Edinburgh. I mean, I feel like he lived a good life and. He got some. He got some ish done in that time. He got some ish done. He won some Academy Awards. He yeah. played a lot of performances across many, many decades. Mm-hmm. And we'll remember him. I think mostly everybody in our generation for being in Jurassic Park. I mean, yeah, yeah for true. being John Hammond. I mean, he also had an extensive directing. Career. Yeah, he did uh, Gandhi? Did, yeah, he did Gandhi. Yeah. So that's you know, when we say extensive, there's one thing we can think of, but he <laughs> actually directed a fair well, amount. Well, there was things. like a period. In the late 70s up until the early 90s where he was just directing. He wasn't acting. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a good couple decades. Did he yeah. also narrate the uh, Earth documentary? Uh, I think you're thinking of you know, David Attenborough. David Attenborough. Oh? Yeah. yeah. There's, there's another one. Are probably. they related? I don't know. No. I have Maybe. no idea. Gadge, please stop looking. Sorry. I don't um, think I ever really watched all the Earth stuff, so... Well, that's fine. I just remember the name Edinburgh being on Vox. Yeah. Well, that uh, no, I remember being confused by that and being like, "Wait, John Hammond does these?" And then being like, "This is not John Hammond. You will ever be not... known as John Hammond." Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and he was exactly. In... And there's you know obviously Laura Dern is Ellie and uh, uh, Jeff Goldblum is Ian Malcolm. Yeah, these are just that's hmm. just the way it is. I feel like so, Jeff yeah. Goldblum's just Jeff Goldblum. I mean, he is. Don't get me wrong. I love Jeff Goldblum, but he's also first and foremost Ian Malcolm. So is John Hammond? Just he was in the first two Jurassic Park movies, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. He didn't get to show up for that for the train thing. wreck of yeah. the third one. No, I don't. I don't remember him ever appearing in that one. That was so bad. That was so bad. But I'm really excited about Jurassic World. I just re- read that Chris Pratt's going to be in that. Yeah. You, you just read that Chris just, Pratt's going to be in that. I don't, I don't keep up with I have some fascinating news. Chris Pratt, you may know him as Star Wars. Have you, have you heard, of, have you heard of the Guardians of the Galaxy? You guys have talked about Chris Pratt once or twice on this show before, yeah. I know. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, Andy Dwyer. Who else is going to be in the world? 
is it important who else is going to be in it? Yeah. Well, I mean, you just made it seem as if it was obvious what the whole cast was. Is it really only obvious that Chris Pratt's going to be in it, and then everybody else is like, yeah, it's Chris is, Pratt plus dinosaurs. Is there someone else that's even doesn't matter in that movie right now? Uh, there might be. I don't know. Maybe there's some of the. Well, I remember hearing at one point that maybe Jeff Goldblum had signed on for it. Huh. Let's see. Jurassic I would actually put that movie on my anticipation list. Otherwise, I I mean, I love Chris Pratt, of course, but I don't know. It's... I'm confused by everything you just said, and I'm going to ignore it. Oh, Jake Johnson and Bryce Dallas Howard. Oh. Judy Greer. Judy Vincent Dinoff. Oh, it makes sense now! BD Wong. <gasps> I love BD Wong. What? Last week, we were trying to figure out why would Vincent D'Onofrio challenge Chris Pratt to the oh. ice bucket challenge. We were like, that's a weird nice pairing. Well done. And that's why, because they're yeah. both in Jurassic, Jurassic World. Oh. Um, but no sign of Malcolm? No, I don't see... I haven't heard. I think that was just rumor. Yeah, that might have just been rumor. Wow, that's a lot of people in it. This has that Ty Simpkins kid, and I think I like him. Is he? He's, he's, uh... Well, he's gray in this. He's this kid. He's in Iron, Iron Man, Man 3. 3. Yeah. yeah, I like him. Yeah, yeah. and good. Insidious 2. Um, although I think in Insidious 2 he spends most of it, like, in a coma, so... It's not really a lot to... Versatile? <laughs> it's true. He was both the kid in Iron Man 3. And, and the one. coma kid. Yeah. Oh, and in Insidious, yes. Um, Revolutionary Road. Which I guess, yeah, maybe was he in a coma most of Insidious, not in Insidious 2. Did you guys see those? No. Uh, Horror is not really my genre, because I'm a coward. <laughs> <laughs> I need You're like by watch far them. the most bold person here, Corey. <laughs> I like to watch them in the middle of the day and like, ah, oh, this is nothing. As soon as the sun starts to set, and I'm like, <laughs> oh. mm. yeah, I watch them Home Alone by myself all the time. Behind that Pushing Daisies box set, which I was watching this morning, is Let Me In, which I'm planning to watch later on tonight. Oh, I like that. So. Yeah, that's not, I don't consider that the same. I mean, that's like vampire kind of. So genre. vampires aren't our no, because I mean. Who's, who's the thing is, vampire? I have well, I have this thing <laughs> about the whole reason why they exist. <laughs> I have this well. thing about like wrists and necks, mm. which is where vampires choose to feed from most of the time, and uh, so I can, I don't usually watch vampire things because they like gross me out, and then I have weird dreams about people biting my neck. Like it. But same yeah. with zombies. Zombies are always like ripping out jugulars and things like well, that. I think I those are always like, those are pressure, not pressure points, but you know, sort of danger zones for a lot of different violences. Necks and wrists? Or, yeah. okay. Necks especially. Yeah. Right. I know. This sure. is why it makes me nervous. I don't That's know. That's an area you want to protect. <laughs> I'm just going to wear a brace all the right. time, you guys. I'm like, I don't know. You're there's looking... vampires, there's yeah. zombies. You look like Bill Murray and Wild Things. Yeah, well, there you go. That's that's what I aim for. I'll have that going for me. To be clear, though, I mean, nice. creature movies aren't frightening to me. Like no, Frankenstein, I, vampires, no, yeah. zombies. Yeah. It's like the supernatural, especially yeah. Asian horror stuff. Yeah. Like psychological horror. Yeah, and that's, that's where, that's where like. I'm like, nope, 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 yeah. nope. Ghost, ghost stuff. Yeah. I love yeah. ghost movies. Although ghost I can do Frighteners. Oh, Frighteners is great. I yeah, hadn't seen that until, like, yeah. I yeah, I somehow missed that. And I had it on my queue forever, and I mentioned something about it, and and my friend Jerry was like, wait, drop whatever you're doing right now and watch Frighteners. And I watched it, and then it was so good! Yeah. I, I, I haven't like seen that. it since the late 90s. I remember watching it before before he became big with uh, Lord of the Rings, and I haven't gotten back to it. I just saw maybe 20 minutes on um, cable the other day. It looked pretty funny. It's really funny, yeah. yeah. And it's on Netflix. Goofy so, ghosts. yeah, you should watch it. That's... I'm all about that. But I generally, yeah, I like, I like those, like, scary, scary movies. Ones that keep me up. When I watched mm. Paranormal Activity 4, um, which, like, normally I just kind of like Paranormal Activity for the stories, uh, but Paranormal Activity 4 scared me so much that, like, I had to stay up and watch other shows till, like, 4 a.m. That was, like, sitting in the living room by myself. I could hear noises outside, and I was just like, oh, yes, I'm gonna yeah. die. I don't... Yeah, so... Why were we talking about that? Any recollection? Um, um, we went from Jurassic Park Jurassic to... Park. The kid in Jurassic Park took us oh, to Sinister. Oh, Ty Simpkins. Sinister. Oh. The kid, Ty Simpkins. Uh, yeah, yes, that's right. Um, so, so John Did Hamm. you see The Conjuring? 
No. Oh, you, God, I don't well, even why know would why I would I watch? I, why <laughs> no. would I ask this? Although I did see the trailer for Annabelle, which is oh, the prequel. Annabelle. Right. Yeah. I am so excited about Annabelle. And I was like... Nobody's going to yeah. see it with I me. Would see, I mean, see it we talked myself. about how like I was kind of gradually talked into seeing... Although we didn't go see it. Purge the Purge. Two. Yeah, The Purge 2. I would Purge 2. I know. And I'm sure it's nowhere near here anymore. Not anymore. This is such a problem. I think I mentioned this before. Just that, like, where we live, we get movies for, like, five minutes. And, like, unless it's something big enough to keep box office running, like, it's gone immediately. So, I missed The Purge 2, which supposedly was actually good compared to the yeah, the first Purge movie. That's what I heard. Yeah. Yeah. And somebody described it to me as being, like, a, an 80s Carpenter movie. Yeah, which uh, I, I can oh, get yeah. down with that. I was like, That's oh, yeah, good. I totally do that. Yeah, who wouldn't want to see that? Um... So yeah, but did you guys see also, just thinking of like box office and whatnot, Gouch, calm down, buddy. Um, Guardians is back on top? Yeah, Guardians is at the top That's again. Right. Yeah. Like, does, how often does that happen? That's a thing. I'm, I'm curious about that. Very seldom, I would say, right? I mean, yeah. I can't even think of an example. Yeah, really. like I honestly was trying to think about it. I'm like, what, when does a movie ever lose the top spot and then come back like three or four weeks later? That's crazy. It has to be something big. Like, Avengers might have done it as well. Yeah. Maybe. Um, but Long I can't... Long-running things. Like, I mean, it, I, wasn't it, like, there's something about Mary. This is, you know, the early parts of my box office uh, awareness. But I remember that, like, took several weeks to get to number one. It took, like, five or six weeks. Oh, or weird. To get to number one. <laughs> yeah, that's another <laughs> rare like one. The field. slow burn. Yeah, 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 that it didn't or, start And, like, that my big yeah. bad Greek wedding was, like... That's an, yeah, yeah, that's a great example. In there yeah. Or things like that. And, yeah. and then, of course, the huge ones, like Avatar, Titanic, things like that, they would lose for a week and then come and back. And then come back. Huh. Um, but it's just kind of, it's not a very strong end of the summer, right? Right, yeah. It definitely has a lot to do with what else is coming out at the moment, which is not, yeah. Yeah. Not a lot of great stuff at this point. I mean, you had Hercules came out. You had, um... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. What was... Oh, week, Into the Storm, that Into epic. Into the Storm, right. And, yeah. And this week, you know, Sin City bombed so badly. Did it? Yeah. yeah. Oh. 6.5 million yeah, for the like, weekend. How is that possible? Six point five. Yeah. 6. 5? <laughs> that's like their families went and, and saw. saw. Yeah, most people. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's crazy. Um, I mean, okay, you guys went and saw it. We did. Yeah. And ironically, is there... let's point this out though. John mentioned it to the two of us that it was yeah. possible. Corey expressed the most enthusiasm of we the did. three of us. Yeah. And then we did not actually join it. <laughs> So John and I went and saw it. That's so, the way I roll, you guys. Which is, is totally fine. You know, but, um, um, but here's my question, yeah. then. I mean, because I feel like, to me, watching the commercials for this, I was like, it basically looks like the first Sin City, correct. which was like a fun ride and visually fun to watch sure. and things yeah. like that. And so on paper, it feels like it should do fine. It should so, do as well, right? Or, yeah, so what was missing? Well, I think that it's the same thing as, like, the internship would have been a hilarious movie in 2002. Mm, mm-hmm. <laughs> this yeah, movie, right, I feel right. like if it had played in 2007, which is two years after the first one came out, people would have still remembered, you know, the visual yeah, experimentation, point, yeah. they would have been interested in the characters, they would have done what John did, which is to try to knit together the timeline of when mm-hmm. all these different things happens, and it would have seemed much more interesting, but, you know... I think people who are in their 20s right now don't know any of these characters, don't really care. Right, no it's just been nine years is a long time. To yeah. try to and it's not like the books are back in vogue at all. No. no. Reading them. Yeah, there wasn't maybe the demand that was necessary. Also, when you think of, I mean, comic book movies, the people who are producing this, are, it's a bunch of private investors, I think, is are the pe- I mean, Weinstein Company distributed it, but they didn't produce it. Okay. So Rodriguez's company got together with a bunch of, yeah, mm-hmm. a bunch of these private investors so I think that they're thinking it's a comic book movie. Um, yeah, these everybody's are hot watching right these. Now. Yeah. But the comic book movies that are really making a lot of money aren't this. No. I mean, this is... No, not like, at all. This isn't really funny, although it maybe tries to be on occasion. Well, yeah, I don't know. Maybe um, the dark... Dark humor, humor yeah, guess. but it, it's, it kind of falls flat. I don't remember. Yeah. Ch- I, I we chuckled throughout, or at least I did, yeah. but it was because it was so bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> the making you laugh it. the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. It's, the, it's the hard-boiled voiceover that happens <laughs> repeatedly, yeah. and right. some of those lines become yeah. very chuckle-worthy. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, did you guys see? Just uh, as a side note, the um, have you ever seen those videos that are like everything wrong with? insert movie here sure. in 15 minutes. Yeah, I watched them like all that. the time. Yeah. Did you watch the one for Sin City, the yes. first one? Yeah, I watched that, because uh, yeah. Wes asked oh. me if I had seen the first movie recently, and I was like, 
I guess oh, maybe I, I really told remember. you it was Cinema Sins. Is that what we're talking Cinema about? Cinema Sins, yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. Mm-hmm. So that's what these are. And I watched it recently. It was like, yeah, 15 minutes. And it made me realize how bad that movie right, was. Right, because it was like, I loved it. And then when I watched the Cinema Sins thing, I was like, oh, oh yeah. this is awful. Yeah. What was wrong with College Me that I liked this movie so much? But that's why it made the $29 million opening weekend when it did, is because when it came out, it was fresh. And, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's ham-fisted. And, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. Also, that style at the time was just kind of amazing. I remember watching yeah. the trailer and being like, what have they done? This is incredible. <laughs> I mean, like, to get that style of, yeah. Uh, yeah. of the visuals from the comic book so yeah. directly on yeah, the screen totally. was really impressive. Uh, and I think, you know, at the time... Clive Owen was still kind of mm-hmm. a big deal, yeah. and um, it was sort of part of this comeback for Mickey Rourke, and people were yeah. kind of excited about that, and, you know, Jessica Alba was younger and a big deal, and all this And sort of Elijah stuff. Wood in, like, a weird role that yeah. was very un-Frodo. Yeah. Was Frodo. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think there was just more anticipation over a lot of people as well. Yeah. And this one, Joseph one levitt who I wonder if, um, you know, plays a new character, but pretty much everybody else is returning. Yeah. Oh, and then, yeah, we talked about Brolin uh, replacing... Clive Owen, but um, I don't think Roland's a big box office draw, so I just don't think no. that. No, I don't think necessarily. Yeah. Also, just in terms of filmic structure, I felt the first one, yeah, it was a series of vignettes, but I thought it was structured really well. I had an intro scene and outro scene, and mm-hmm. then um, it had very little interlacing, which I appreciated. It was sort of concrete stories. This one yeah. doesn't really have an intro scene. It kind of throws you in the middle of a story, okay. um, which... And then it sort of tries to interlace all the stories in a way that, I mean, I guess it's not super confusing, but I can see it being super confusing. Right. Yeah. I mean, it was they were sort of laced together in sort of a throwaway way. It wasn't very intentional or thoughtful. It was sort of like, oh, yeah, this person's walking into a bar, and the guy you saw from the previous story is also in this bar at the same time. Oh, okay. well, like oh, every other scene is at that I bar, right? I hate those right? kinds yeah, of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the bar sort of ties, there's some geographic things that tie mm-hmm. things together, but it's not important at all for the narrative thematic. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. But, I mean, I think, you know, I, I mean, I, I still feel like one of the storylines, in particular of the three, was pretty good in this film. Um, Eva Green does a great job, uh, I think, actually showing up and realizing that she's playing a completely ridiculous, over-the-top role. And, mm-hmm. and, riding and working that, with that, riding yeah. for all it's worth. I, I, she's a great actress, and she does a really, really good job with it. And I, yeah. you know, we didn't quite agree on this, but I thought Roland was actually a bit of a, an improvement over Clive Owen. I did a fine job in the in the role that he needed to uh, play, but there were also plenty of weaknesses. Do either of you guys watch that Clive Owen show? By the way, no, the one with the surgeon. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, no. yeah. And kept seeing it on the way to the cemetery for like the. I remember the billboards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and apparently it's super good. Yeah, I hear it's incredibly bloody too. Well, yeah, yeah. That's I feel like that's implied. You just look at those things. Uh, that's gonna it's Is gonna be what, hard to watch. The one where he plays. I'm going to probably forget it, confusing things. Uh, cocaine addict? Do- doctor? No? Could be. I don't know. I, like, I, really, I don't else. know much very, about very it. Early surgery, right? Yeah. So just trying to okay. learn how to do basic surgeries. And it's in England, I believe, right? In the early 1900s or something? Like that? Yeah, I feel like he's a cocaine addict. He could be a cocaine I addict. I might be confusing it with something else, though. Yeah. I love the internet. <laughs> it just <laughs> it makes that. life so I think I was listening to an easier. NPR story, which is how all my... Memories. That's where all your knowledge comes right. from. This is why you have no idea who Bear Grylls is. Exactly. All of, your, all of your cocaine habit knowledge comes from NPR. <laughs> the Nick, that's what it's the called. Nick. His name is D- Dr. John W. Thackeray, and do you know why I like that? Wes, why? you might know. I, I have no hope for Thackeray? Vanderhoff. No. Thackeray. Um, uh, Hocus Pocus. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. This ago, character. Like I watched that movie, but I haven't seen it. <sighs> Thackeray Banks. Okay, well, clearly I'm going to have to make you watch that. Um, Sounds very British. So, a look at... Oh, that's a very vague plot. A look at the professional and personal lives of staff at New York's Knickerbocker Hospital during the early part of the 20th century. That makes it sound so boring. It could be about anything. (laughs) Yeah. This sounds like boring ER. Let's... uh, What else? Um, Wow, even the review someone wrote is boring. Great attention to medical detail with a good storyline from an excellent cast, right. especially Clive Owen. Oh, boy. Can I get more vague descriptors in yeah. this uh, sentence, please? I l- listen to this. This new series has all the hallmarks of a long-running show. Aww. <laughs> like, what? This is so vague. This is adequate Some, to be okay, reviewed. There's got to be a better... <laughs> this is adequate to be reviewed. Uh, let's see. Let's. we got to find a better description of the Nick. I know that Anne Helen Peterson posted something about it recently, but... Hmm. 
I like that the first uh, line of this Rolling Stone recap of Follow Your Nose, an episode, is, don't get syphilis. Oh. <laughs> if I had a nickel for every time. Um, and then we have N- The New Yorker saying, Steven Soderbergh's disappointing new show, The Nick. Oh, I didn't realize he was implicated in this. <laughs> he was implicated. <laughs> implicated. <laughs> Sounds bad. Cinemax, you got to give us a better... Yeah, okay, so I know a little bit about this show. I okay. think this is about, and I could be wrong, Okay. Totally. obviously the time period. We're wrong all the It's time. also Go about ahead. the um, sort of like uh, barriers to being a doctor for this uh, this black doctor, because at the time it, there was only like a few um, medical schools that even accepted um, uh, black people, and I believe that's a part of one of the, the main okay. threads as well. Cool. Oh, and there's cocaine. Yeah. I see the yeah. word cocaine okay. somewhere so, in there. And then, yeah, Clive Owen's character is like, he's not... Yeah, his secret addiction to cocaine. Yeah, exactly. Okay, this is gonna... Okay, I like this idea a little bit because it reminds me... I don't think that this guy was addicted to cocaine, but it reminds me of the book that I constantly rave about, um, Destiny of the Republic, which was about uh, James Garfield's assassination. Okay. And about how basically he... It, he wasn't fatally shot, but he right. died because people didn't believe in germs, and they would, like, stick fingers in the bullet holes, and, like, you know, all this kind of stuff. Sure. And so, like, this actually is kind of, and so you're also following this doctor, who at the same time is trying to convince people germs exist, and that we can, like, stop people from dying by washing our hands before we go into surgery and stuff, and they're like, that's <laughs> Nonsense. stupid. Nonsense. You know, um... So this says that set in downtown New York in 1900, The Nick is a new Cinemax drama. Cinemax, you silly. Right, I didn't even know um, that existed anymore. I know. I'm not lying. Like, no. It is centered on the Knickerbocker Hospital and the groundbreaking surgeons, nurses, and staff who work there, pushing the bounds of medicine in a time of astonishingly high mortality rates and zero antibiotics. Soderbergh directs all ten episodes of the series' first Ooh. season. So, uh, Clive Owen stars as Dr. John Thackeray, a brilliant oh, surgeon pioneering new methods in the field despite his secret addiction to cocaine. Mm-hmm. We all have our things. He leads a team of doctors, including his protege, Dr. Everett Gallinger, the young Dr. Bertie Chickering, and Dr. Algernon Edwards, a promising surgeon who's, be- who's been recently thrust upon him. That was a confusing sentence. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's, uh, the rest is pretty generic in their explanations here as well, but, oh, ugh, look at that GIF gallery. Dear God. Dear God, what's nice. happening? Yeah, there, you guys, man. there's, yeah, they're grinding something up. There is, like, uh, organs. Yeah. So the NPR, again, let me, <laughs> that's the only, yeah, that's the only frame of reference. Back to it. It's fine. I have two white men on my show. Right. The NPR was bound to be of course. a part of this. Look at these glasses. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so it was all I know is basically like they were talking about like well the view of cocaine at the time and you know but many many people were using it and they didn't think it wasn't this huge stigma. Yeah, yeah. There's a stigma, um, right? But and then also the racial politics of the show, of course. <laughs> That's all NPR had to say about it, really. Um, it's pretty good. I <laughs> there well, are racial politics. There are, there are <laughs> racial politics. It confronts the racial politics of the time. Okay. Uh, that's um, good. Yeah. I want to hear a, an entire show wherein John summarizes Marvin all these opinions about <laughs> <laughs> different different shows yeah. that he doesn't actually know about. Right. Uh, Phenomenal. That would that would actually be pretty funny. Um, I was listening to on the media the other day. <laughs> and here's what I right. Here's make what I, of their here's what I caught assessment in the, in the background. Um, in fairness, I am mocking him about the NPR thing, but before rolling cameras i was also telling him about an npr thing i listened to with the showrunner of mad men so i am i am definitely one who does the exact same thing well because we were discussing and we can kind of use this to talk about this as well um the the emmy nominations that have come out um and i have them here in case we want to like just go through and and look at them um but one of the things that I was saying to John mm-hmm. is that so many of the shows that are nominated for Emmys are, like, kind of inaccessible to people, you know? Because you mm-hmm. have, like, y- like your what? Homeland, you have uh, Masters of Sex. Oh, you mean you have... in terms of access? Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> inaccessible. Inaccessible. I thought you meant, like, narratively access. inaccessible. Like, no oh, one can yeah, identify yeah, yeah. with this person. <laughs> It's like Marvin he's, he's Olney. Thick. Marvin Olney is really accessible like, right. to everyone, but also inaccessible. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I see. Yeah. No, I that see. That was what I thought you were going with. Okay. <laughs> They're hard to True access. True Detective. 
True. Have either of you ever seen True Detective? Yeah, I've watched them. No. Yeah. You have. Well, is it well, HBO? It is HBO. You have he an has HBO a stolen Go HBO Go. I have, like somebody, a, I have someone's uh, HBO Go. Someone offered me yeah. one yesterday, and what? now I'm really annoyed that I can't remember who it was. Oh my god! Whoever if you it was, if you told me I could use in. your HBO Go, <laughs> you let me know. Right. Um. My father has HBO yeah. Go. That's, um, but yeah, it's not even the person you're using. Your no, no, no I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I say in official yeah. podcasts. Oh, it's down. It's true. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, so they're like, hard to something exist, like actually. yeah, like True Detective. Right. And I was yeah. saying before, like House of Lies, like yeah. nobody has ever seen either of these shows, but yeah. everybody talks about them. Yeah. You know, it's like all the critic people are like, oh, they're the best, and yada yada, and it's like. They go into these Emmys and people who are sitting at home watching on yeah. There's like what, no ABC connection to NBC. These it's like well, it's also what do you care? You know, so late after whatever the season is. So maybe there are advertisements yeah. or there are uh, you know nominations for Breaking Bad, which has mm-hmm. been over for forever, feels like ever. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and so I mean, just yeah, we've connection. already forgotten these people exist. Yeah, basically. I was like, I thought you already did your awards final victory lap like yeah. i thought that happened a year ago right, right like, exactly. how is this still happening yeah well because that's true because i mean uh, well maybe that was i guess that was different because of the killing off of a character but i was just thinking of um when Giancarlo esposito was going up against aaron paul yeah for best supporting is that what they yeah, call it yeah. Yeah. yeah things like that and so it was like oh it's really final and all this kind of stuff it's finally coming around and Brian Cranston last year, and it yeah. like really seemed really final. Like this is the last shot. If Brian yeah, Cranston doesn't win this like, year, I yeah, that, that narrative being people. around people being like, "Oh, this is Brian Cranston's last shot. This season just ended. It's over." Yeah, I don't yeah, like. How are we just, doing this again? Like, I don't understand how, um, for example, True Detective, which seems like it wrapped up not that long ago. Yeah, that feels like it was like nominated two now, ago. but Breaking Bad, which wrapped up, I feel like. I feel like a year, a year ago. ago, but maybe it couldn't have been that long ago. I was here, so it. Yeah, it must have been last fall. Yeah. But that, yeah, it just feels... It feels forever ago. feels forever ago. I don't know. That's really weird. But then, yeah, so then you've got, like, Homeland right. uh, and Masters of Sex and things like these that I'm sure are wonderful shows, but mm. for when you're airing the Emmys on, like, NBC and stuff like that, it's really, I mean, I don't know. I just feel like... I think, yeah, I think it's making it less likely that there'll be a big following for any of these shows, with the exception of something like Breaking Bad. Yeah. Um, or House of Cards. I mean, like, I mean House of Cards yeah. works because of Netflix. Now, Netflix. Or Scandal, The Good Wife. Right. Like, things like that that are fairly easy to get on, get to. You've got, like, The Newsroom. Um, right. All this stuff. I don't know. This just bothers me. I feel like they're always wondering, like, gee, why do people hate the Emmys so much? Like, um, maybe because nobody watches this stuff. Like... Yeah. There's this very small group of people who can afford to watch it, and then like in the with HBO, like maybe a broader group because you can steal people's HBO Go passes. Yeah. And That's the thing with the Nick. Like, like that, but, yeah. I really want to watch yeah, that show now, nobody, but I nobody don't know has how. Cinemax. Right? <laughs> it's like isn't the whole point of that channel basically like softcore porn? Like. That's that's my understanding. I didn't After know it 10 does. 10 p.m., yeah. Yeah, it's like basically movies that aren't as good as the ones they're airing on HBO and Showtime and softcore porn, and so they're trying to get into it with The Nick, um, yeah. which apparently is good. Well, I guess what Cinemax has going for it, though, is that's the one most likely to be bundled in with your other right. stuff. Hmm. So yeah. I feel like if you have other pay channels, you usually have it just because they're like, oh, yeah, exactly. us too. Us too. Remember us? So yeah, I'm... But that's true for the drama stuff and not for the comedy stuff. The comedy stuff is almost no. all much more accessible. With the exception yeah. of something like Veep, right? Right, yeah. that's true. Um, but it seems like, you know, comedy is one of the ones that people can actually get behind and everybody knows. Yeah, that's true. Um, which I can't... I was saying before, too, I can't believe that Modern Family is still being uh, nominated for comedy. I watched, you know, like three episodes of that and I was like, alright, well... Yeah. I mean, I liked it when it started out, you know, it's fine. Now when I watch it, I'm kind of like... Mm. Yeah. I'm over it. They don't really have anything new to say. And they kind of, they pulled a glee where they just kind of, like, picked, like, here's sort of a caricature we can stick each of these people in. Right. And, like, just have them act in that caricature and stay that way. And it's, um, (laughs) it reminds me, okay, on our website, on the Electric Feast, 
you can see the search terms that people use to bring you to the website. Yeah. Um, and the other day I thought it was funny that one of them was, what's the differ difference between caricature and character? Oh. And I was like, oh, you need a dictionary, not our website. Uh, <laughs> how, how would that even lead them? Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing is, well, my favorite thing is we constantly get people coming to our website looking for something called Boys Feast. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that's not um, safe mm, for work. It's a cooking show. I'm, pretty I'm sure. sure it's a cooking show. That's right, right. Yeah, and then we'll get like people looking for like porn cartoons and stuff like that. And what I always wonder is like they clearly they clearly then clicked on our website. Right. So like I'm like, did we distract them from their mission? <laughs> like they were like, I wanted to look at porn. Right. But actually, I'm going to read this girl's essay on being mixed race and watching Fast and Furious 6. Like, you know, I, I don't... They end up sticking around. They yeah, didn't leave right away. Yeah. They're like, well, That's what's good. this about? That's a curse. Um, yeah. yeah. I feel like that was... Wasn't that the goal of the um, Burt Reynolds character in Boogie Nights when he just talks about what he wants to do in, like, producing... No, you guys have not seen Boogie Nights enough. I, well, I'm sorry. Not but enough. I do like, I, yeah, I do like Mark Wahlberg. If that counts for anything. That counts. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's the thought that counts. credit. Um, anyway, at one point in time, Burt Reynolds talks about his very high ideals for what he's trying to do and, um, okay. and producing, and it just reminded me of that. Okay, that's fair. Um, and, uh, another thing, I forgot about this when, uh, this came out, but the outstanding lead actress in a comedy series, mm -hmm. look at how white that is. Oh, I know. Lena yeah. Dunham, Melissa McCarthy, Edie Falco, Taylor Schilling... Amy Poehler and Julie Lewis Dreyfus. Orange is the New Black isn't even really a comedy for and one it, thing. And it's, I mean, arguably, even though she's like technically the lead, like mm. really, like who nobody watches for Piper because she's right. the worst. Yeah. Like if you were gonna give, okay, if it's outstanding lead actress in a comedy series and you have this whole cast to choose from, I don't know. I, someone explained there's like weird rules to the Emmys about how they choose like who gets to be a lead and it has to do with like their contracts and yeah, what yeah, they yeah. signed or whatever. But it just, I'm like looking at this list, I'm like, really? They couldn't have like found one. I guess maybe there are no shows on television that have a non white lead female. For well, comedy. Yeah. For comedy. For comedy, yeah. 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 I don't know. Yeah, I don't I guess I can't think of any. I guess I that would explain it. Right I like that Ricky Gervais is nominated for Derek for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Comedy Series, even though that's only, like, marginally comedy, too, because I sobbed through every episode. It's pretty, like, yeah, it's Every like, uh, episode. I, I just, I'm just, ugh, tears everywhere. Have you watched it? I have not. Oh, my gosh. I don't know I have, how I feel I about watch. that performance. Oh, I'm I not just... sure if it's exploitative or not. Well, yeah, I think that's always kind of the question with that show. I mean... Obviously, I, I don't think he's trying to be, but I don't know no, that no, that no. matters. Like, yeah, but, that's what I'm, you know, like, yeah. I don't think it's vindictive or like yeah. he's somehow laughing at, at, after every take or something. Right, yeah, I think, I think he's, he's very sincere about it. Right. But it always brings up that question of, you know, if you have a character with disabilities in a TV show, why not have a character with a disability actually play him? Like, uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, Walter Jr. on Breaking Bad, sure, yeah. you know? Where he doesn't have it as severely as his character does, but he does have the same disability, you know. But I don't. I really. I, I love the show. I'm do you? Like, oh, I, I do. Most. It's because I. I like to cry. Sometimes. Did you watch the second season? I, I believe did. it's available. Yeah. Okay. Oh, See, I did. See, I know I didn't like it that much because when I saw that, I was like, maybe another time. <laughs> well, they're short. Like the you know yeah. the season's short. The episodes are short, so it works out okay for me. Um, also, episodes. That's still on. I've never seen a single episode yeah. of episodes. Have I've you never, seen it? No. no. And supposedly Matt LeBlanc is great in this. Supposedly Matt LeBlanc is still acting. I, I... Yeah. He is like in this. He's all silver fox. Right. You know, right. and looking good. Um, and I have never, um, never caught, I don't even know what channel it's on, to be honest know, with what, you. What is Shameless? I don't know. What either. Shameless yeah, is know. based off of a British show of the same name. Okay. It's William H. Macy. It's like a dysfunctional family. Is that Showtime? Yeah. Um, I think it is. Yeah. yeah. Has uh, Emmy Rossum is in it. I feel like she it's like a dysfunctional family and she kind of has to be sort of the like parental figure for her siblings and all that stuff. So any like Showtime like, Go or whatever it's called. Do they have that? Yeah, they have that. Oh, I didn't know they had one of their own. They do. Um, yeah. Because there's a ton of Showtime shows I've never seen. Like Nurse Jackie, I believe. I was yeah. glad to see that Kate McKinnon was nominated 
um, for Saturday Night Live. It's been oh a long gosh. time since anybody gets nom- yeah. got nominated. And she deserved it. Kate McKinnon's comics. great. She's hilarious. Man. Yeah, I absolutely love her. There's a lot of really funny women on um, on SNL right now. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of most of the cast. I don't like the new Weekend Update guy, though. He is kind of awful. What's his name? I don't remember his name. The guy with the smile. Guy with the smile. You know? That would require me to watch SNL. Ugh, uh, you're killing me. Sorry. <laughs> I don't even know why I ask you here. Mm. Um, and Tony Hale's apparently on beat. We were literally just walking out in her back door, guys. She was like, <laughs> hey, in. hey, come in here. Hey, I'm here hey. to talk about a raccoon. I don't know. <laughs> I could have come in for the last 10 yeah. minutes. Is this? Oh, these also, the pages on the Emmy website are like split kind of funny. So they'll have like one nomination for a category and it looks like that's the only one. one. And then person, you go to the yeah. next page like, oh, okay, there's a bunch more. So this one, it's outstanding guest actors in a comedy series and they're all orange is the new black. I was like, really? That's it? But I'm sure if I change the page, there'll be more. But it's nice The rest that... of the Orange is the New Black cast. Yeah, it's just all that. <laughs> it should be, for goodness sake. Right. I, I'm, I still don't get that being a comedy series. I, I thought it was going to be a comedy, and then when I started watching the first episode, I was like, this is not yeah, a comedy. Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah. it's more drama with comedy. Drama yeah, comedy. I don't it's know a comedy it. with, I mean, a drama with comedic elements, yeah. I guess. I don't know. But, yeah. Eh, I don't know. Um, so there's the Emmys. Yeah. There's all that. All that jazz. Joan Cusack. Oh, she's on Shameless. What do you know? And Nathan Lane, who I think basically everyone in the world watched The Birdcage in the past week, so we did, yeah. it's nice to see Nathan Lane. I watched The Fisher King. I did too! Yeah. yeah. Hey, fun fact. So, the son you hate so much yes. in um, Birdcage, Birdcage yeah. he is one of the thuggy guys at the beginning of Fisher King who like tries to oh, really? like stab, uh, what's his face? Probably. No. No. Um, uh, Jeff. Oh, Jeff, Gold, Jeff. Jeff Bridges. Yeah. Jeff I was going to say Jeff Daniels. You yeah. said Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges. I was like looking Santa at him Barbara. and I was like, I am fairly certain that's that one guy. Wow. And then I like Googled it and I was like, yeah, that's the same dude. So they were in two movies together really? in, in a few years apart. I don't know yeah. if they would ever remember. Oh, I'm sure they but, did. I mean, it seems like Robin was very good at remembering a lot of people. That's a good point. Yeah. If anyone's going to remember some extra who he stopped from stabbing. Jeff Bridges. Oh, I've been sitting. I'm sorry. Okay. I need to use you guys. Do, I'm do sitting that. on my foot. Oh, gosh. Ooh. That was a problem. Walk it off. Okay. Walk, Walk it, it off. <laughs> yeah. uh, so what else were we going to talk about here? Uh, we talked about Sin City. Oh, um, so <laughs> let's talk for a second about um, I made the boys listen to a, a cover of uh, Girls Just Want to Have Fun. By what did I, I said I'd write down his name? Did I? Yes, Chase Holfelder. Mm-hmm. Um, and he a few months ago did the uh, the Star Spangled Banner in a minor key, which was like kind of a viral thing that went around. It was pretty cool as well. Um, and so he did like a serious version of "Girls Just Want to Have Fun" this week. That may be my new favorite song, but I'm also a girl, so there's that. I don't know. What did you guys think? Wow, well, I, I just. I don't, it just seems so sad to be his favorite song. <laughs> I, mean, like, <laughs> I don't know how that would travel. I mean, I understand that it's it's quite talented and quite impressive. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I would not want to listen to it more than once in a row. Oh, I listened to it like five times in a row. I feel like I morning. have to listen to it more because I don't have a lot to say. Other than the fact that, I, like I told you guys before, I feel like the song now has a subtext about drug abuse. <laughs> and I never got that from the original. Well, it seems like the girls are trying so hard. Yeah. They just can't have fun. They're not having the right kind well, of fun. I feel like... <laughs> like, I feel like the, I the read original it anthem differently. was like, girls just want to have fun. And it was like, yeah. kind of happy and upbeat. And... Yeah, it's like, well, the original one is more, yeah, it's more like, oh, this is super fun, everything's great, and whatnot. But I feel like in this one, he kind of makes it like, this sad anthem of like patriarchy and being oppressed you know because it's like the whole thing like has this really heavy tone Mm. to it and he changes it so it's like she instead of like i or anything like that so he's not talking as if he's a girl in this right you know so it's like she comes home in the middle of the night and her father says what are you gonna do with your life and like it sounds like she's just trying to figure her place in the world and everyone's telling her this is what a girl's supposed to be and she's like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that. So she turns know. to drugs. 
She has a cocaine addiction, and she's working at a hospital. That's right. In the early nineteen <laughs> hundred. No, I don't. Uh, I mean, I think that I think no. you're totally right. I mean, I got that sort of sense of it being about sort of you know the struggles of girls in the world. Yeah. Um, totally true. I just can't. I, mean, I it just doesn't seem like a song I want to listen to many more times. I'm like, wow, well done, excellent, totally good point. I'm not depressed. <laughs> Gosh, you guys are just so easily affected by media. It's uh, true. Okay. Too scared to watch horror movies, too <laughs> depressed to listen to potentially right. feminist boy covers. But, like, and, setting yeah. things up is, like, a thing now, right? You can sort yeah, of take anything. It really is. Prop it in minor key and sat it up a little yeah. bit. Yeah, which is what then led to, I then subjected them to uh, the trailer for the awful... Britney Murphy movie that Lifetime is airing or has aired? Has it? I think it is airing, right? It is airing September or something. Okay, yeah. John heard about it on NPR. (laughs) (laughs) It's a hot topic on NPR right right now. Let me tell you. Um, And it's like really like, so this is hilarious to me. Not, I mean, Britney, (laughs) (laughs) that came out wrong. Mm. What's hilarious to me going to the song thing is that they used like a satted up cover of Don't Hurt Me by Hathaway in it. You guys. Don't hurt me. Yeah, there's there's no I like I'm sitting between two dudes and they could not make that work. This is this <laughs> is this too? may be the lowest. Oh no, I wasn't. Oh, this may be the lowest moment in fan cave oh, history. <laughs> so disappointing. What is wrong uh, with you guys? Frozen. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is... Well, you already talked about this. it being satted it up and over top of a, you know, story about somebody getting killed. And so, yeah. you know, it's not like it's an easy slide into Chris Kattan mode. Well, yeah, so it's really hard somebody to has make to that it. jump. Somebody yeah. has to do it. Yeah. I think, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's, so I, I, yeah, it, I, it's a thing though, just to like yeah. make them. Well, and then like, what right. was it? Oh, um, in the trailer for The Great Gatsby, do you remember they had that really like sad, angry cover of, um, what was, uh, what was it? Um, uh, was it a monkey song? No, what was it? No, no, it was, oh, it was a Trespassers Williams song, wasn't it? I don't even know who that is. It was the one that I just remember it had, it's the, Imagine me and you and you and oh, me. No. I think that yeah, okay. right? Mm-hmm. Wasn't it? Could be. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. It was some sort of satted up version of something that was like, yeah, that's like a thing now. It's like if you make a trailer, right? It yeah, well, has to be the Avengers trailer at Comic Con had that really creepy version of Got No Strings from Pinocchio. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of awesome. I can get yeah, behind that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you can probably find the pirated audio out there somewhere, uh, but. Uh, very unsettling version of that song. <laughs> Great Gatsby I, song I like trailer. songs that we... Why, why aren't there ways to make songs happier? Why do we have like a nice... So you just you speed happier. it up. Make it happier. Make it happier. Make it happier. That's just not the time we live in, okay? I know, I know. We Everything needs to be sadder. And I'm, I'm okay with that. I like sad things. That's... Got my outlet. Uh, why Jay-Z, Kanye, and Jack White set the tone. Um, I feel like this is not... No Church of the Wild was in some of the trailers. Okay, well, I think it should be pretty clear what one of them... Love is Blind is? Okay. YouTube cover. Okay, this is... This is more difficult than one would have thought. Oh, okay, so this you is and my me. problem. So the Love is Blind is song... I think yeah, I Happy first, Together. I first learned about... Oh, that's the thing. Happy Together. Yeah, so happy together. I don't know who actually does that song initially, though. Do you guys know? No. Well, we know the song. Either way, apparently it's Filter who did it in that. Do you guys know Filter still exists? No, I'm glad they still exist. Yeah, good for them. I I mean, everybody went through a little bit of a filter phase with that. Take a picture song. Take a picture, yeah, yeah. Hey Man, Nice Shot. That was a good song. You guys remember that? Sure, yeah. No? Just keep nodding in my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I totally had phases in music. <laughs> really? Tell us about them. Punk phase. Uh, what kind of punk phase? <laughs> like, am I supposed to say like a specific band or like gutter punk? Or like, like what? Punk, like what punk, band? Yeah, punk. like what kinds? Uh, I listened to a lot of gutter mouth uh, okay. when I was like fifteen. Okay. Some people might know that band. Yeah, of course. Yeah. 
Yeah, no. Is that that's it? <laughs> just listen to a lot of gutter a lot mouth. Of, I just listened to gutter mouth. I hung out on the gutter mouth forums. I made friends with everyone. Oh, uh, remember gutter forums? Mouth. Those were the best. I never forum posted. That was not really. Yeah. Oh man. Got away we already said you had like every version of online journaling that has basically ever existed. This all is true. Back I I IR, IRC, like the original. That's not a journal, but I did sort of had. I have IRC. <laughs> uh, my mom was big on IRC, and so I tried to use it, but it was confusing to my brain. Um, I used, you know, AIM. Right, yeah. Standard old AIM. AIM. Yeah. Yep. But that wasn't a journal. It was a no, talking was... book. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's what IRC is. That's how IRC I learned is. to type, by the way. Was, like, was AIM. I mean, like, I thought a lot quickly. of kids did. Tons of people, I feel like, our age. Like, yeah. that's how I learned to, to get past that. Although Mavis, Mavis Beacon did a nice job yeah. a couple oh. years earlier. Yeah, Mavis Beacon was Mavis, it. That was my favorite game. Started. That was all I ever wanted to play was Mavis Beacon. It was like, this is why I'm terrible at video games, because really all I want to do is be like, oh, typing game, this is fun. I feel like Mavis Beacon needs to make a comeback somewhere else. It's still, it's, it's just, she's still around. She's I, still around? Yeah. She's still teaching typing? She is still teaching typing. She gets younger and younger on the box every year. I feel like there year. should be a Showtime show called Masters of Type starring Mavis Beacon. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be Masters It Masters would be my favorite Boy, show. Uh, like super clean. There's yeah. no sex or violence in it. No. Like, or I don't know. Maybe there's a lot of intrigue in the world of typing. Typography is a dog eat dog it's about sport. Finger stretching. There's all yeah, this lots of carpal it. tunnel messages. Mm -hmm. Oh man, yeah. yeah, a very special episode about carpal tunnel prevention. Uh, yeah. So we're we're close to to out of time actually. But what was um uh the other thing? Oh, shooting today. Yeah. So uh, that's always a nice note to end on, but. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah. We're we're keeping it light today. Suge Knight was shot six times. That was something like that. I think they downgraded it. To Did only they? A couple of shots, I think. Now it, it but, just uh, you just took a couple of slugs. Yeah, yeah. Here and there, but there uh, were a couple of other people who also got hit. Yeah, anyway. yeah right. like famous people or just other people. <laughs> Just normies non-important humans well here's my question is I'm like was there like a whole bunch of other people there who like everyone should care about but for some reason we picked Suge Knight to be the one that we care about no I don't think that's the case I think the other I mean I think there probably were like other famous people but I think the other people who were hit were in fact bystanders yeah, yeah um, that's right I think there was it was a young girl and a mid thirty something guy. That's right. Who, yeah. who got and hit. how did it happen? Like, was this like a drive by or like no, someone like no, no, no. ran up party, and it was? It was someone attending the party. Yeah. Yeah. Were they fighting? My to yes, there was probably no. I don't know. That wasn't disclosed, but I okay. assume there was a quarrel. there was an altercation of some yeah. sort. Yeah. So it wasn't just like this is for you know history. I didn't realize that he was driving the car when Tupac got shot. Really, you didn't know that? No. Oh, well. My history is not good. Um, <laughs> my history. <laughs> my history is also terrible. I didn't know that. Uh, gosh, nonsense. you guys. Um, oh, who's been shot when? Yeah, no, that that was definitely a thing. So that that's like I assumed like oh maybe other people got hit, but it was because it was weird that like it was like a POC yeah. sort of thing happening. I mean, if you think about it, it's surprising that guy hasn't been shot more. <laughs> is it? Is yeah, it? he's like okay. one of those people who has like so many enemies. Like uh, everybody hates Suge Knight. Yeah. I feel like uh, it was only a matter of time, but that's pretty. Like, of I feel course, like, is that why he's chilling with Chris Brown? Because I feel well, like that's Chris the thing. Brown is like, not well liked either. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Is like, of all places, of course, this is gonna happen at Chris, right, Chris Brown's Brown pre VMAs, uh, yeah. pre VMAs yeah. party because Chris Brown is terrible, and terrible things are gonna happen around Chris Brown. Sure. <laughs> Have you ever heard of Chris Brown? I know who Chris <laughs> Brown guy. is, yeah. He's a, he's an unsavory character. There were a couple, <laughs> there were a couple of NPR shows about him, so he's actually got a lot of information. Uh, Golly. Uh, I wonder if Chris Brown took the ice bucket challenge. I bet he uh, didn't. I bet he did not. I bet he did not, but I saw Eminem did. I saw you did. You did a little version yeah. of this. <laughs> It's true. It's true. Uh, I, I did a little. Do you guys see Patrick ice Stewart's? Ice oh bucket? my god! The best. The best two for amazing. me were this week were Patrick Stewart and Nick Offerman. Nick Offerman's is awesome. Oh, I didn't see. Nick oh, Offerman. I didn't watch the whole thing of Nick Offerman's. Oh, it's great. I mean, all, he stands there and he basically says, you know, well, first he gets challenged by Chris Pratt, right? And Chris Pratt drank like some sort of something. Yeah, ice, we talked about this last ice. week. Yeah, yeah, but Smirnoff ice. Smirnoff ice. And in his response, Nick Offerman was like, can I substitute lady drinks with something real or something like that, right? <laughs> so he mocks the fact that he's drinking this. Uh, and yeah. so then in his little thing, he, uh, I think he drinks a little bit of whiskey. 
And then he just stands still, and somebody comes up behind him with just a giant, giant thing, and they dump it on him, and he doesn't move. Yeah. Like he just stays. Of course. Just, it's like the slow motion. And then he says, like, any time now. And then he just starts cracking up. <laughs> and, like, at the end is with it. Like, he couldn't quite hold uh, it, but he just stays completely immobile for the whole thing. I love that he's, like, embraced himself as Ron Swanson. Oh, completely. Like, I, why wouldn't you? I why like wouldn't if, you? Yeah. If you're guess... Nick Offerman, I would totally embrace myself as that. But I, I, I like that, because now, both with Patrick Stewart and sort of with that, there's, we're getting to the point where people are getting innovative with it. And yeah, totally. And they're just not totally. the same way. And so anytime yeah. you've got sort of a limited, repeated action, people are starting to get creative about how to yeah. do that thing. I'm surprised at how not sick of this I am, though. Like, I, I keep on thinking, like, any minute now, I'm going to be so over these ice bucket challenges. And then another one comes out, and I'm like, no, this is the best. I'm enjoying it. Benedict Cumberbatch. Getting it in the shower. I feel like, it's, like it's also been an opportunity for a lot. It's been more male stars, like mm-hmm, more mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, well beloved, especially by females, like male yeah. stars um, that have been doing this as yeah. opposed because there there is automatically an element that could lead itself to sort of some horniness on yeah. the female sure, side. Yeah. The wet t-shirt not, thing. Yeah. It is not developed into that at no, all. Really. No, not at all. On yeah. the contrary, it's been a lot of dudes who are ripped getting mm-hmm. getting doused. So. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's I love wonderful. the compilation fails. Oh like, my fails. People like lose gosh. control, of, like a like a whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Those like, kill like, me. Some of them are like trash cans, they right? Drop yeah. Into his friend's head. <laughs> like, or coolers, like I, like someone like lose control oh, when they're like trying to throw the cooler <laughs> on it and like smacks the person in the face. Oh, the whole gosh. cooler. The what? one that killed me the most was <laughs> like this kid. Oh my gosh, he tries to dump it on his friend, and he's like this scrawny little, like, yeah, yeah. you know, 12 or 13 year old, and he's like, it's wobbling with the bucket and just, just pours it on himself. himself. Yeah. <laughs> I The died. other one I loved was there was, uh, I think he was, it was a kid who had like four or five friends who were going to help him with it, and so he, like, you know, stands up and says, Here, I'm going to do the ice bucket challenge. And his friends were all supposed to throw water on him from different directions. <laughs> and one girl oh, just went chuck- to Chucks the whole pot yeah. and just hits him in the face with the pot. And, and then gets... she picks it up yeah. and splashes him again. And then it was like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. But it was clear she just got a little overzealous. But I mean, again, anytime. I mean, part of it is also just you have people who are intending to do good. Yeah, yeah. And then just getting hit in the head, which I feel like is comedy gold. So it is. Yeah. There's nothing better than that. For decades, <laughs> not centuries, people have been laughing. At Shot and Freda has been a thing forever. Getting hit in the head. And yeah, it's. Classic. Yeah, there's really nothing funnier than accidental injury, oh, to be honest. Good. So yeah, good. those compilations can keep me going forever. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's probably the best part. Yeah, ice buckets and whatnot, and Suge Knight. Suge Knight probably didn't take the ice bucket challenge, nor did Chris Brown. Mm. And that's what that gets you. <laughs> Let that be a lesson. Um, so, uh, any anything else you want to... Any parting shots for the cast? Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that like I was invited on here. I didn't get to do my top threes. <gasps> I spent way too much time thinking about that's my true. Top no, three let's do this because celebrity yeah. crushes. I just want to get He told me here. specifically. He, he was like, I listened to Kristen's. I really need I've been thinking nonstop about what my like OTP. I didn't is. say nonstop, but I did say that I was spent you way said too much something time very yeah, okay. It. Way, well, way too much time thinking about it. Did I John, interpret did you get how I to interpret. do this when you came on us again? Uh, that was three? before we started yes. doing this. No. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. With celebrity crushes? Yes. I want you to think about it while I go through my extensive sure. list of celebrity crushes. <laughs> okay. So that you can get okay. a chance to do this too. That's uh, right, it was the celebrity crushes you wanted to do, not your OTP. Okay, so so sock it to me. Let's give it So I have I have categories. Okay. Oh my gosh, all right. First category is people who made movies in the eighties that I saw in the early 90s who I thought they were really beautiful and are still beautiful today who I'm still just sort of I've been had crushes on that are enduringly long crushes. Okay. okay? <laughs> Number one, Robin Wright Penn. Hmm. Well, who's now Robin Wright. Yeah, right? just Robin okay, Wright. So, um, yeah, about to be Robin Wright Foster. Right, about yeah. to be Robin Wright Foster. Yeah. So Princess Bride, the, the mm-hmm. hero of Princess Bride has, shares my name. She says his name number well, of times. Well, kind of. It's Wesley. It's true, but, but I mean, yeah. when they pronounce it, you can't really tell, right? Yeah. Close enough. So, um... That was always an enduring love. Okay. Uh, number two, Maggie Chung, who was a Hong Kong film actress who was in In the Mood for Love and a number of other things. But she was in uh, Police Story, which is a Jackie Chan movie that he directed in the mid-80s. Wonderful in that. Still okay. enduringly beautiful. Number three, Kristen Scott Thomas, who is still I think I know who that is, lovely. but it's um, just like one of those names that I, like, I'm never quite sure. You would recognize her. She's yeah. in um, English Patient. She's in... Um, uh, th- th- you know I don't watch things a, like that. A haze. Um, <laughs> 
Can you imagine me oh, sitting down and four watching the funeral? The four weddings and the funeral. I haven't seen that since like fourth grade. Still though. Still blur. But I, I think know I know who it is. Scott Thomas. Like I absolutely recognize her. Um, I'm fairly certain I do know who that is. One of the things, and and Corey will appreciate why I. Okay. You yeah. Know, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one of the things that's great about her her first movie, 1986. Mission Impossible. The director, yes, Impossible. of course. Okay. The director who discovered her and put her on screen for the first time, mm-hmm. Prince. What? She was in Under the Cherry Moon. It was her first role. It was a significant role in a wow. film. So okay. All right. That's category one. Okay. And also, I have to just do an honorable mention shout out to Karen Duffy, who was in uh, Blank Check. Did you guys ever see Blank Check? Of course, right? like a million times, but uh, I don't remember so what Karen Duffy is. <laughs> you guys out there... She's the girl. She's the FBI chick who he like. Okay. Okay. So, so the movie, crushes on yeah. Yeah, it, it, totally inappropriately, right? Yeah. So this is made yeah. in the wake of Home Alone. They were yeah, like, let's do young kids of, movie sort of thing. Yeah. Twelve year old boy gets a million dollars, starts buying a bunch of stuff. FBI a agent shows up. Dollars. Yeah, I know yeah. At the time it was a that big deal. seemed like a yeah. huge amount. Now I'm like, that's not much. <laughs> so this FBI agent <laughs> shows up to investigate this whole thing. He has a crush on her, and it's to- totally played off, played off as if it's like a potential romantic partnership. And they end up kind of like big, like big, kissing, was, yeah. slightly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They end up kissing slightly at the end. Anyway, when I was 12 and watched this, I was like... uh... Wait, is she the... She's also in Dumb and Dumber. Oh, yeah. Is she the, like, the one... What was her name? Karen Duffy. Karen Duffy. Actress. Dumb and Dumber, 1994. Uh, Sure. That, she actually doesn't even look vaguely familiar to me. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll take your word for it. Okay, so I did see the movie a bunch of times. So people who are age appropriate for okay. me to have a crush on today. Yeah. Okay, wow, this is uh, thought out. I have a total. I do have a crush on Rooney Mara, who I think is incredibly sure. talented and yeah. beautiful. Oh. I know By the way, is like she related to that. Kate Mara? Yes, they're sisters. Yes, they're sisters. Okay. and they both. Okay, let me just interrupt She's for creepy, one second. I would say no, no, no. It's not the creepy. They both seem like just horribly bitchy people. And that's the thing, what? I have no, I, you know I don't actually pay attention to people's lives that's as much true. as what yeah. the, what happens on screen, so yeah. I, I predict I would probably not get along with this person at all. But it's, it's photos, though, it's screen, that, like, when talented. people, yeah, maybe on screen there's something there. I would get, mm. like, Kate Mar a little more, but every time I see photos of them, it's anyone who, like, chooses never to smile, like, that's their thing, I'm like, oh, no, I don't, I can't. Yeah. Do this. But, I mean, you're entitled yeah. to it, you're entitled to it, I'm just telling you. To Anne Hathaway. Yeah. Okay, mm. Wow. You have interesting up picks. What a four feminist kid. sort of things. <laughs> right. Big fan. Great lips. Beautiful. Big fan. Uh, what else going on with her? Number three. <laughs> number Great lips. Three. <laughs> yeah, you, you, should, you should be talking about the features. <laughs> Go on. Number three. Yeah. Uh... I'm just kidding. Like he was there for a long time too. Natalie Portman, who's also around. Mm. That has been every single person who's come on this show. Sure. Has I gotta change my Natalie impromptu. No. <laughs> you, can you can keep that. Uh, recently uh, I've done, you know, and again, this is more a personality sort of thing. Emma Stone seems really cute too. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, and then my last category I feel is, like this is every guy of a certain age is list ever. Yeah, it really, like, that was I, basically that the most I might say Kate Mara instead of Rooney Mara. Yeah. <laughs> I like that you, I mean, I think Rooney Mara is a little more off the beaten path. Yeah, 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 people, I agree. But, really, uh, yeah. Kate's a safe choice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then sort of like all time, yeah. like classic Hollywood sort of things. And these are, again, also very predictable, but like... Audrey, Audrey Hepburn. Hepburn. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, and Grace Kelly. Mm-hmm. Um, or would be sort of the top two. And then Ingrid Bergman would be the fourth. Okay. But again, also very predictable. Now, now I want to yeah, do one great. revision of that, too. One revision, too. Which is, I want to talk about my man crushes. Can I talk about oh, my man Oh, yep, yep. I'll, I will definitely allow that. Okay, so... Oddly, I have more to say about my man crushes. <laughs> Think about that, too. Yeah, okay, well... So uh, one of mine is Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who I think is just delightful. Yes. He wears a suit, wears the hell out of a suit. Mm-hmm. That Very is true. Little, that little wonderful little dimples. Can dance. Talented yeah. guy. Mm-hmm. Big fan of that. Um, number two, and you know this, Mads Mikkelsen. Yeah. True. Bones. You also love the suits on Mads, too. Do you watch Hannibal? Incredible. I've watched a little bit of Hannibal. And I really we both it. have trouble with Hannibal because it's so gross. I it's like it you want to watch eating. it, and then you're like, you I sit down and you're like, oh, I'm going to have a little... You can't Pop. eat. No. Nope. <laughs> Why would you do that? No, no. yeah. <laughs> and then my, my all-timer is, is actually Paul Newman, who I oh, think is really amazing. Oh, please, of course. Because he, I mean, he held down a good marriage to a very strong, intelligent mm-hmm. woman. He was a good father. He did the um, Paul Newman, Newman's own sort of company yeah, with his daughter. Stuff. He was a good cook. Yeah. He Luke. was an amazing friend. He also did, you know, great... Movies. And he always was long. hot. Like he was a classy dude and hot. All yeah, time. he yeah. was hot till the day he died. That's, right. that's amazing. I'm just saying that's the way to get it done. Yeah. So Paul Newman is my all time. Okay. All right. Yeah. 
John? John. Jeez. Um, can I add either of those lists? Uh, well, <laughs> recently, perhaps because of Guardians of the Galaxy, Zoe saw that. Oh, yeah. I love um, the Zoe. Especially with Green Paint. No. <laughs> He's just a classy and awesome. Um... <laughs> We found John's case. God, um, I don't really think she's a great actress, but Gal Gadot is like oh, yeah, lovely. Gadot. Well, um, she's fine. I mean, we have she's, I, she's yet to really break period. out. Yeah, yeah, I think I would like to see. Hopefully, maybe as Wonder Woman, but actually outside of this, that kind of action yeah. genre, maybe what she can do. Yeah, totally. Um, gosh, uh, male crushes Chris Pratt, of course. Yeah, come on. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah, um, like that was obvious though. I loved him That's, when he was yeah, pudgy. Yeah, I love I'm him saying. when he's you know super buff. He can be yeah. any size. Yeah. I loved him as Bright on Everwood. I like him on Parks and Rec. I like exactly. him in Guardians. He's, yeah. Um... Across the board, yeah. <laughs> Ruffalo's great. Oh, he's always Mark he makes everything. Although slow. recently he insinuated that he didn't like Ben Affleck, and that kind of threw me off a little bit. That's yeah. that is. How did he insinuate that? I missed that. Well, he was on what is that? Like, guess what happens next, or whatever. Um, it's like a show on Bravo, I think. Um, and he basically insinuated that like he thought that Jennifer Garner stopped being friends with him because Ben told her uh. not to. Okay. And, like, and he, like, <laughs> when know. then the guy, like, asked for clarification or whatever, he was just like, hmm. He was like, I'm gonna let that stick. And I was like, <laughs> oh my <laughs> god, that's a little, that's a little petty. Like, <laughs> you just basically asserted that, like, Jennifer Garner's in a controlling marriage on television in front of people. It's that's, true, yeah. You know. It's disappointing. Yeah, that was a little disappointing. But generally, I love Mark Ruffalo. That was, maybe he was having a bad day or something like that, you know. He's remembering his friend. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't really know. On top of that, I'm, I can't, I hadn't, I hadn't had the time to think about it. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't, um, you didn't have cat categories right. broken down. I haven't had my like scotch that. ruminating in the <laughs> bathtub. <laughs> Which is how I imagine you came right. up with it. <laughs> I listen to Marvin Olney and I drink my scotch. And I think about my celeb credits. Yeah. I'm an so, old white man. Yeah, that's, the, that's a good way to do it. Uh, well, that's fine. That was a good... Did you ever list. do yours, Corey? I mean, like, yours... Some of yours have become obvious throughout the course of the show. Yeah, that's obvious. the thing, is I right. think that I just generally talk about my okay. crushes all the time. You know, obviously, James Badgedale, James Badgedale, Carl Urban, Chris Pratt. Okay. Um, I was yeah. going to say, Chris made it to top three? Oh, Chris I, Evans. Ah, oh, Chris Evans. I'm sorry. Oh, Chris Evans. He's awesome. Yeah, come We're on. We're sorry, Chris Evans. Sorry, yeah, Chris Evans. Chris. We... We're constantly. Yeah. Second, but we talk there. to Chris Evans on our show all the time. Really? Like this is the thing. Like you have to Chris, get him on here. Yeah, because right? yeah. Kristen and I are like, you know, I'm sorry, Chris. When you're on the show, we're going to, you know, make sure we ask you about cellular. Like we're constantly addressing cellular. Him, so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah, because yeah. cellular is a genius. And have you seen it? I think not. Oh. I don't think so. I'm thinking of phone booth, but that's no. Crazy. That is not genius. That is terrible. <laughs> that's uh, Colin Farrell right? <laughs> that is an awful movie um, no Cellular there's a great like kind of action comedy uh, with Jason Statham and uh, Chris oh, Evans okay. and Kim William H. Macy Kim, Kim, Kim Basinger, Basinger yeah I'll check comedy. that out um, so I didn't want to forget about Chris Evans yeah because uh, yeah you're his captain you're the captain of his heart you're <laughs> captain of my captain and also mm -hmm. Snowpiercer was great yeah Snowpiercer, was great. yeah. Snowpiercer. Good. Yeah. Well, good job, you guys. I'm glad that you brought that up. I, I didn't want. I would have been sad if I didn't. Yeah. Get you didn't. Out. You've been waiting this entire that time. Like, time. is she going to ask me? Categories. Is she not going to? Um. Yeah. So then, with that, uh, this has been episode 29 of Electric Fan Cave on ElectricBeast.com. That's crazy. So next week, Kristen will be back. Um, and we'll we'll do some fun things. I don't know if we have a guest or anything yet. We'll see if someone shows up. Chris awesome. Evans. If Chris Evans. Evans. Chris, if you're not busy, hey, calendar. stop by the fan cave. We'll have a good old time. Um, uh, BT Dubs also, someday hopefully we can look forward to having Ben Bode back because we found a recipe for Zima. So we're going to make that. Oh, yeah. Um, so make sure that you subscribe to us on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Tumblr, Twitter, everywhere that subscribing is an option. Just go ahead and do it. You'll find us at Electric Fan Cave or at Electric Feast on basically everything. And to see the blog where we will have all the links to the things we talked about today, go to electricfeast.com. Um, over here, I'm making sure I'm pointing in the right direction. I'm still, the, the screen's backwards to me. 
We have Wesley Jacks. Uh, do you want to? Uh, is there anywhere you want people to find you on the internet, or are you just anonymous? <laughs> I'm not. A, you can find me if you are Chinese through Baidu by searching Kan Kian Ying Jiao Peng Yu. Enjoy that. <laughs> and my name. Uh, Dong Ma. <laughs> which was, uh, my students used to find me all the time when I taught in China. I used to live in China. When I taught in China, first week of class, all my students would come up and be like, We saw your video online. <laughs> it's the only place I am online. Wow. So, uh, if you speak Chinese, there you go. Vanderhoff, at John Vanderhoff. That's right. You can find me on Twitter, Twitter at John Vanderhoff. Um, yep, and that's, Media that's... Fields, I don't know. Maybe do you do that? Not no. Media Fields, that's not what I'm thinking of. Media Industries. Oh okay. yeah, sure. Um, but Twitter's fine. You can just Twitter's Twitter. fine. He'll link to other stuff he does. It's okay. Yeah. Whatevs. Don't look too deep. <laughs> Don't look don't too, go too far back. Don't, don't, don't go, go too far back. Internet. Yeah. All right. Well, until next time, Corgan Vaughn here with my bros. Peace out, everybody. Oh, let me go through, but do you want us to prep anything? or? No. Okay. Prep? Who does that? That's, That's fine. <laughs> You've listened to this show before. Clearly we don't prep. That's not so a thing organized. we do.